fat side up or fat side down. Hey folks, welcome back to Just Pillin Barbecue. Today we're gonna start a four uh, video series over barbecue myths. And I'm gonna cover the top four or what I think are the top four barbecue myths. And today I figured I'd go ahead and start off with probably the biggest one, uh, at least in my opinion, the biggest one. And that is fat, fat side up or fat side down or does it matter? Um, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of opinions on this video, um, but I'm gonna try to stick with the facts. Now, I'm gonna tell you what I do, um, and it's really not gonna matter, but the part that I really wanna address is gonna be the second half, um, and I'm gonna just stick to facts uh, for that part, and um, I hope that some of you take these facts uh, and apply them and realize maybe what you thought was true, maybe it isn't true. Uh, so let's get started with it. All right, now I'm not here to have a pissing contest with anybody. Um, I'm just here to talk about it and maybe uh, dispel some things that aren't true, um, and, but I hear a lot of people say. But first, let's talk about the basic premise fat cap up or fat cap down we're talking about uh, big pieces of meat specifically pork butts or brisket uh, but for my situation I'm just uh, gonna stick with pork butts that's what I do a lot of um, so let's talk about it fat cap up or fat cap down why sometimes it might be beneficial for one and why sometimes it might be beneficial for the other what are the advantages and disadvantages okay and for those of you that say it's got to be one way or the other, I disagree with you. Um, and I'm gonna tell you why. First off, let's, let's say you're one of the, uh, there's, there seems to be three camps here. There's the camp that says it's gotta be fat side up. No question about it, it's got to be fat side up. <clears throat> and the second, camp says well it's got to be fat side down and they have the reasons for being fat side down and then there's another camp that says it really doesn't matter one way or the other okay and I'll tell you which camp I'm in in a minute but let's talk about camp number one it's got to be fat side up well I got some notes here just to make sure I stay on track uh, but let's talk about the advantages of, of cooking fat side up are there advantages of cooking fat side up um, if your argument is that you want to cook it fat side up so that when the fat renders it, it may baste the meat as it drips off I mean I can I can see where that happens you know and um, I'm not gonna argue that it probably does and gravity obviously you can't argue with gravity it's gonna naturally roll that uh, that fat that's rendered off the side of the meat and down the side of the meat and kind of baste the meat I guess you could say so if that's your reasoning for going uh, fat side up I mean I can't really argue with that um, another advantage it protects the top of the meat from any kind of convection type heat and what I mean by that is if you're if you've got a, a smoker or a grill that that the heat kind of rolls over the top and so you have found that uh, more times than not the top part of your meat gets drier than the bottom then you might want to put that fat cap up to protect the top side of your meat um, and I can totally go uh, along with that uh, that makes perfectly good sense to me um, another advantage to having your, your fat cap up is that it may decrease uh, the effect of the stall and how that happens is because the stall is really created uh, because of water evaporation when, when you, that big piece of meat gets hot enough water starts evaporating 
through the top of when the meat. When that water starts to evaporate through the top side of the meat, it has a cooling effect and uh, that creates the stall. But if you've got a fat cap on top, that might prevent some of that water evaporation and also prevent that cooling, which is gonna prevent that stall or at least keep it from being as severe as it could be. So uh, that's one thing to consider. The fat cap on top may um, decrease the effect of the stall a little bit. Let's talk about some disadvantages. <clears throat> Number one, no matter, no matter what, if you've got a really thick fat cap, um, and when I say fat cap, we're talking about an untrimmed fat cap. Um, it's really gonna affect the amount of smoke that is absorbed in your meat. Uh, you know, a smoke ring, uh, more times than not, is really no more than about a quarter, sometimes three eighths, if you're lucky, half inch, but my experience is it's most time around a quarter of an inch thick. Well. If you've got a quarter of an inch or greater of fat on top, then you're not gonna get that. So that's something to consider. Um, also, when you're putting on your rub, um, if you're putting your rub on that fat cap, it's really kind of a waste because the rub is not getting on the meat, number one. And number two, at the end of the day, let's be honest, that the majority of that fat is gonna be in the trash before it's over with. So, I mean, that, I really don't see any point in doing that. Um, the other thing is, there's kind of an advantage of, uh, if your argument is that the rendering fat is gonna base the outside of the meat, uh, because you gotta think about this too. You have uh, put your rub on the outside of the meat. And so when the rendering fat is dripping off the outside of your meat, it has the potential to wash off the rub that you just put on. So that's something to think about as well. Now, let's say you're in the second camp and you're fat side down. Uh, one of the disadvantages of that is that the top may dry out. Uh, that's a real possibility and you have to watch that carefully. Um, and this may be a situation where you have to have that spritz bottle ready and about once an hour you go out there and spritz the top just to keep uh, everything nice and moist on top. Um, but some advantages of having the fat side down is it's going to be a barrier or a protection from your heat source if your heat source is on the bottom uh, and keep that bottom from drying out. Uh, so it can act as a uh, heat barrier there. It's also going to create better bark overall on the sides and on the top uh, by having that fat side down. Um, and then overall, you got to think about uh, what kind of presentation that you want. Um, and I'll talk about why I do it fat side up or down in a minute and cover presentation a little bit too. Uh, but if you're wanting to present a pretty meat side, then I would go fat side down uh, because you don't have the meat actually resting on the grates, creating those indentions of the grates, and you're gonna get one solid uh, bark on top rather than that meat being on the bottom, creating little grate marks and having an uneven bark. So the presentation may be better on the meat side uh, if you do it fat side down. Now the third camp. The third camp says it really doesn't matter one way or the other. Me personally, that's the camp that I fall in. I'm being honest with you. It really does not matter one way or the other uh, where you have the fat cap. It doesn't really matter. If you have a, uh, a, a grill that creates more heat from the top, then put the fat cap up. If your all your heat source is mainly coming from the bottom, then put your fat cap down. Um, you know, if you think you're not gonna get that basting effect by putting it on the bottom, well then put it on top, but it's really not gonna make much difference. Um, and I'll give you an example of, of what I do. Um, you know, if I'm cooking on a, on a Weber kettle or something like that, some kind of charcoal or even a pit barrel cooker um, and the heat's coming directly from the bottom, I'm gonna put it fat side down. Um, 
Otherwise, I may put it fat side up. And we talked about presentation a while ago. Well, lots of times, you know, I'll take that fat cap and just cross hatch it all the way down to the meat, uh, back and forth, and then put my rub on it. Some of the rub does get on the meat, but not very much because it's still blocked by all the fat. Um, but basically, you know, when it cooks down and the fat renders a little bit, you got nice little squares of, of fat and it looks kind of cool. But I'm gonna be honest with you, at the end of the day, it ends up in the trash can. So it, again, it really doesn't matter. Um, so, so far, I really don't have a problem with any of it. Do it however you want. Um, because at the end of the day, I promise you, if I cook five pork butts and I do one up, one down, one with the fat cap trimmed off, uh, one sideways, uh, and I cook them the same way, when I pull them off and I pull them or shred them or chop them, however you want to do your barbecue, uh, and I fix you a barbecue sandwich or just put some barbecue on a plate, you're not going to be able to tell me where the fat cap was. Let's be honest, you're not going to be able to tell. Um, so the only problem I have with um, the issue fat cap up or down is the fact that people telling other people that it has to be one way or the other or it's wrong because that's really crap. It doesn't matter. Now here's where I have a little bit of a problem with this argument. And I see it, I mean, you can go on any forum or uh, barbecue Facebook group and sometime throughout the day you're gonna see this argument. And people are gonna have an argument for the top, for the bottom, for trimming it off, whatever. And I just gave all those disadvantages and advantages and uh, you know, I'm good with all of those. Until someone says that they have to be fat cap up because the rendering fat is going to absorb into the meat, down through the meat, and keep the meat moist. Now that, that is not true. Um, and I'm gonna go through why that's not true. But what I would really like for everybody to do is, uh, you know, you know, back in the 80s and 90s, you know, uh, we had different styles, you know, clothes and hairstyles, and uh, believe it or not, I had hair back then. And, uh, you know, it was just a fad kind of thing. And, you know, we bought them and we wore them. And, and then 10 years later, you look back on those pictures and you, and you say to yourself, what in the world was I thinking? But at the time, we didn't question, is this, does this look goofy or, you know, is this the right decision or is this true, you know? Uh, we just fell in line and did what everybody else did. And I think w this is where a lot of these people fall is they're over at a buddy's house and he's cooking a pork butt or a brisket and he says, well, you gotta cook them fat side up because if the, the fat's gonna render down into the meat and keep the meat inside moist. And the guy says, yeah, that, that makes sense. So then he goes back home and that's the way he's done it for 10 years now because Jim Bob told him that it was gonna do that. And now he has told a buddy who has told a buddy who has told a buddy. But they've never really thought, does that really make sense? Is that logical? Is that common sense? Is it scientific? Um, and that's the problem that I have with it. Although I would love for it to be true that that fat, that juicy succulent fat is going to render and that meat is just going to take it and just suck it right on down in there and that meat is gonna get juicy and just succulent and tender and just mouth watering. I mean, that sounds really good and like almost romantic. I mean, it's got a little ambiance effect to it, you know? I wish it was true. It sounds awesome. Until you get to the scientific part of it. And then you realize that's absolutely scientifically, chemically, physically impossible for that to happen. There's no way that's gonna happen. And I'm gonna tell you why. All right, first of all, the notion that the external fat of a pork butt or a, a, or a, uh, a brisket for that matter is what's gonna keep that meat moist and tender. 
is, is false. The internal fat is what keeps these pieces of meat moist and tender. That's why, that's why you pick a prime or a wagyu if you can afford it. Uh, because of all the internal marbling that the meat has. Otherwise, it wouldn't matter. You would just go to the store and pick the meat that had the most fat on the outside. That's what you would be picking up. That's what you would be picking up. Okay? So again, just kind of think about it for a minute and, and ask yourself what's logical and what's not. Okay? If you trim the fat cap totally off, one guy... I, you know, I read a couple of different forums on this, and one guy said, well, you know, he said, if you trim the fat cap off, then that makes that pork butt lean, and I've never seen a lean pork butt. I've never seen a lean pork butt either. That's because pigs don't make lean pork butts. It's a pig. So just because you cut the top uh, fat cap off, it's still got all of that internal... Um, fat that's going to keep the inside of the meat moist okay so it's not going to be lean just because you cut the fat cap off and that's if you want to do that i'm not saying that's right or wrong uh, have i have i done that yes i've cooked them fat side up i've cooked them fat side down i've cut the fat cap totally off and cooked them and they've all turned out great it doesn't matter back to the uh fat cap absorbing into the meat Think about this, and again, there's going to be a little bit of sarcasm here, but I'm trying to make a point that I want you to just think about, you know. And I wish that this was true, that uh, that fat did render back down into that meat, because it would make it a lot easier, you know. I wouldn't have to come out here and foil my grease pan. There wouldn't be any grease because it would be all absorbed up in that sponge, that, that meat. I wouldn't even need a, one, that grease can. I would never have to worry about cleaning my grease can out when I cook a big pork butt because all the fat would have rendered back into that meat and it would be just nice and juicy. So cleanup would be a breeze. But that's not the case. Every time I cook a pork butt, the next time that I cook, before I cook, I've got to clean my grill out because there's grease, all that fat. My grease can needs cleaning out because there's grease uh, in my grease can. Why? Because it dripped off the side of the meat on the grease drip pan and into my grease can. It didn't absorb back into the meat. Okay? Here's another thing. Um, and I'm going to put a link up here or up here, wherever it goes, uh, to a website, AmazingRibs.com. They did a great article. Um, on this topic and they get a lot more scientific than I am I'm trying to keep it simple um, but go and read that article they did a great job explaining it uh, a little more scientific than I'm doing but again I'm trying to keep it simple <clears throat> but you know if you've watched any of my videos where I do pork butts y'all know that uh, unlike most people that use mustard for a binder I don't use mustard I use olive oil well, if that oil, fat is oil, and if oil soaks into the meat, well, then when I coat my pork butt with olive oil, if I just let it sit for a little while and I came back to it and went to put my rub on, on that binder, which was the oil, well, I wouldn't have a binder because the oil would be gone because it would be absorbed into the uh, pork butt. You know, they, they even made a, a hole in some meat, I think it was beef, and actually poured oil into that hole and let it sit for three hours. And when they came back, the exact same amount of oil was in that hole. None of it got absorbed into the meat. Now you might say, well, that's because there wasn't any heat involved. If you put that thing on the heat and get it hot, then it's gonna absorb it in uh, into that meat. That's when, that's when that fat renders into that meat. Well, actually, it's the opposite. When you heat that meat up, it's going to prevent that oil from coming into that meat even more. You see, when you heat up that meat, think of that meat. Just work with me here. We're going to do a little make-believe. Think of that piece of meat as a schoolhouse. Okay? 
and you got all the little students in that schoolhouse. But that, but that, all the little students in that schoolhouse, think of that as your water molecules, okay? And a piece of meat, uh, brisket, pork butt is about 70% water, okay? And that's where I'm going with this. When you heat up that piece of meat, or in that schoolhouse case, you pull the fire alarm at a schoolhouse, all those students, AKA water molecules, are gonna go out of the classroom into the hallway and try to get out that end door to get outside. They're all rushing to get outside. Why? Because it's hot inside. They don't wanna burn up. Well, all those water molecules are trying to escape that meat. And then you got a big fat molecule out there if we believe that it's absorbed into the meat, trying to get in. Well, it's not gonna be able to get in because all those water molecules are rushing out, forcing it outward, preventing anything from coming in. So again, there, there's no way that that fat is going to come into that meat. There's no way it's gonna absorb into that meat. And lastly, you know, oil and water don't mix. We've, we've learned that since we were five or six years old out there messing around with a lawnmower or something, you know, with with my daddy and, you know, there's water in the oil and, or something, you know. Oil and water don't mix. Um, and that's just a scientific fact. The oil, the fat, the rendered fat is not going to go into a piece of meat that's 70% water. All that water inside those muscle fibers. It's not. Think about it this way. When you inject a piece of meat, okay? Let's say, let's say this, I got a glass of water right here. Let's say this glass of water, this water represents the water that's in some of the muscle fibers, okay? And I've got an injection and I'm gonna inject my pork butt. And so I inject my pork butt, but what is that? You've gotta have something that your injection mix is suspended in. Most time it's water or a water type substance. It could be water, it could be apple juice, it could be beer, it could be whatever you want, but the majority of that liquid is water. But you've got your other seasonings in there, you know, and you inject your pork butt. Well, if I was to inject that injection into this glass of water right here, what would happen? It would all dissolve, okay? Your seasonings would dissolve and spread out the water that's in the injection or whatever liquid that you have is going to kind of meander around and kind of mix with the water. So it's going to really become one solution, one whole solution, okay? Well, think about it. If, we're, if we believe that the, the rendered fat is going to absorb into the meat and that's what keeps the meat moist, why would we not just inject fat? Let's just melt down some fat render it down into a liquid form, make that our injection, and inject our pork butts and get ahead of the game. You know? More's gotta be better, right? So why, do, why, do, why doesn't anybody inject their meats with a fat injection? Well, can you imagine injecting a fat injection into this water? Or I've got a 18,000 gallon pool right there. What if I just poured 50 gallons of a fat injection into my pool? What would happen? I'd have the biggest, nastiest, slimiest mess you've ever seen because all that gooey fat would be suspended on top of the pool and all the water would be underneath. Or vice versa. Same with this glass of water. That's what's going to happen in your meat. It's not going to mix. It's not going to mix with that water. That's why we don't inject with fat, because it's not going to work. And that's why when people say, well, you got to do it fat side up because that fat's going to render and it's going to absorb back through that meat and keep that meat tender and moist. That's when I have the problem because that's, that's scientifically, factually not true. It's impossible. And the sad thing is, just yesterday, there was uh, barbecue pitmasters on TV. 
There were three or four episodes in a row, and they were traveling, doing them. <clears throat> and one of the guys, a renowned professional pit master, owns his own successful restaurant, said exactly that. That fat's going to render and absorb back through that meat. And this is a pro, you know. And, I, you know, I know some of you are going to say, well, I guess you think that you know more than that pit man. No, I don't. I just think that, you know, sometimes it's easy to uh, regurgitate things that we've heard without actually thinking them through and thinking about what you're saying and asking yourself, does that actually make sense? Um, so, right, wrong, or indifferent. Fat side up, fat side down. No fat cap. Fat cap sideways. I don't care what you do with your fat cap. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. You're not going to be able to tell me which one it was when you're eating it. But is the fat cap going to render and absorb back into the meat? No, it's not. That's factually untrue. So please, uh, when you hear anything about, well, what should I do with this? And it's a pink, an opinion type answer that you're gonna get, and you're gonna get two or three different answers. Just take it all in, and then decide for yourself which one of those makes sense, okay? Don't just automatically go with the first one. Don't just automatically go with the one that you think that you have the least amount of chance of being made fun of by others. Because there's a lot of guys out there that are making fun of guys that are doing it fat side down because they think that that fat's gonna render back into that meat. So, uh, don't let that be um, cause for you to make a, an unwise decision about how you cook in your own backyard. You do it the way you want to do it, and that's the only right answer, okay? And if somebody's in your backyard and don't like it that way, well, they can go fix their own. How about that? I hope this uh, first barbecue myth video has been uh, educational, entertaining. I hope there wasn't a whole lot of people that were triggered. And I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I'm really not. I just want people to be... Uh, to use their common sense a little bit more and be a little bit more logical about their barbecue stuff. I think we're making it way too harder than it really should be. Um, so don't make it complicated. Uh, think about what makes sense for you and uh, try it a couple different ways and see which way you like it the best. All right? Thank you for watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel. And until next time, I'll be fiddling. And that evaporation causes the meat to uh, start cool. Uh, co it's got a.